Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I wanna just show you a quick way that we can change variants using variables. Let's get into it. So to set up this interaction, it's quite simple. All we need is two component sets. The first one is for the checkbox, which is bounded by this purple dash. We can see our two variants. We have the unchecked and the checked. And then for our button component set, we have the default button and the active button. Then we need to create two frames. So our starting frame just has one variant of each set. So we have the unchecked box and then the default button. And when you check on this box, we need it to change to the active button. So that's where variables is quite handy. And then when it's active, we can go to this end state. So in our variables here, we can see we need one string variable, which we can attach to this button. So that enables us to change it from default to active when that box is checked. We can see in our prototyping tab here, the only arrows that we need to create are between these checkboxes because that's what we want to use as the trigger. So you can see we have the arrows going back and forth so we can go from unchecked to checked. And then the other arrows we need to create are from this active button to the end frame and then being able to return back to the starting frame. So now let's go ahead and I'll show you how we can set this all up. So you might start with something like this. You have your components designed and you might have some frames. So the first thing you want to do is you want to create some component sets. So we can go ahead and select these two and they are auto layouts because they have this icon over here. We can just go to this component button at the top, but instead of creating component, you want to go to the drop down and create component set. And the reason we want to create component sets is because we want these two components to be associated with each other. So essentially we just made them into components and they currently have the same name, but we're going to go ahead and change that later. You can also just go drop down, create multiple components so you can see them as components and then you can combine as variants here. So again, we also want to associate these components together. So to get the variables to be working, we need to actually change their name. So in this properties over here, you can see some variants have the same property values applied. Essentially what that means is um, we have a property called property one and the value is default and you can see they're both called default. So we wanna actually change this. So for this one, I'm just gonna double click. You can see how it says property one equals default. You still need to copy this pattern. So you can't just delete it like that. It needs to say something. So we can just go state equals default. And then this one, we can go state equals active. So now when I click on this component set title here, we can see there's a state and the two values here are default and active. And let's just do the same for this one. So we can go state, state equals unchecked. And this one, we might say state equals checked. Okay, so now we're going to copy them into the frame. So I'm just holding the option key to quick copy. And you can see here, we have the label here, state. We can change it from default to active, and we can also assign it to a variable here. So we have no variables here. We can press the plus here, or we can just escape and see our local variables here. We just need to create one string variable. So let's say that controls the state of the button, state of the button. And for the value to get this to associate, we need to make sure it matches the name of one of the variants. So we can see we want to actually associate it to the button. And the reason we want to associate it to the button and not the checkbox is because we want people to be clicking on this and, and affecting this. So because this is a thing that's being played around with, we need the variable to be assigned to this one. So we know the button can either be called active or default. So we want this value to be default. And now the way that we associate it is we just select on one of our instances. So if you remember an instance component has this kind of icon, which is the hollow diamond. So over here, we can just go assign variable. We can now see the variable that we just created. And when we click on it, we can see this pill. So we can also detach it if we want. So it's just state button. And now we're going to set up some interactions. So we go to the prototype 
And the first thing we want to do is make sure that when you click on this, it changes its state within itself. So all we need to do is select that component and drag it to this one. So when you're in the prototyping tab and you drag a handle, you're essentially saying you want to start an interaction. So on click, we want it to change the state to checked instantly. Yep. And the same thing. So when it's checked, and I'll drag it back. So on click, we're just going to change it back to unchecked. So we also want to do one other thing. So when it's unchecked and we click it, we want it to change it to checked. We also want this button to go to the active state. So we can add another interaction here, add an action. And we don't want to use the change to. So we've seen this change to, change to up here. So when you do change to, you're essentially just changing the variant in this component set. But because it's outside of the component set, so it's in a different component set, we need to use this one instead. So set variable. So we want to set this variable state button to change to this new active variant. And all we need to do is in quotation marks, write active. So we can just get out of that. And in reverse, we want to do the same thing. So when it's checked, we want to uncheck it when you click on it. And we want to change the state back to default. So we just add an action again. We set the variable state button. And in quotation marks, we're going to write default. Nice. So that's pretty much all done. The last thing we want to do is we want to make sure when it's on the active state, we can go to this end frame. So we can just select it in here. And the reason why we want to build it into the component set is so that anytime we see this component, they will do the same interaction. So this interaction, we want it to go to this frame. And Figma is quite smart. It already knows what you want it to do. So on click, we want to navigate whatever frame you're on to the end frame, and we can just make it instant. And now let's check our end result. So now to view if it's all working, we got to select our starting frame here and hit this play button up here to present. It should open a new tab and now we can see our prototype. It's just loading here. So I'm going to just press Z to zoom it up. And so now when I click it, it should go to active state. If I click it again, it should uncheck this and go to default state. Yep. And now when I select on this button, it should go to the end frame. And that is changing variant states using variables in a nutshell. Hopefully you like these kind of shorter videos. I don't know if you prefer shorter videos or longer videos. Let me know in the comments below. But otherwise, stay hydrated, take a break, rest your eyes, and I'll see you all next time.